Hello my friends, how are you doing? It's time for some magic again and today I want to show you a super easy way to replace a sky in five minutes and add some beautiful ambient light as you can see here. Woo, really nice. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So as you know, I've told you in the past that with Lumina 4 you can do this easy cheesy no problem, but can you make maybe also do it as quick in Affinity Photo. So let's test this today. And of course, I have prepared some stuff for you. So we have this background here. Let's delete everything. So we have this landscape with some overcast on it. You might maybe throw this picture away, but keep it because you can do some amazing stuff with it. And I downloaded this sky from Unsplash, of course which is very nice, has a sunset atmosphere, looks really beautiful. We want to add this to the sky. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that the horizon is fairly simple because we only have mountains, no trees, nothing too complicated. But there is one problem you want to deal with and that is there is snow on the mountains and it's overcast so the sky is white and the mountains are white and this can lead to a little bit of selection problems. I want to show you how to circumvent them a little bit. So we go to our selection brush on the left side, click on that and then make sure it's on add and then just paint in here with one click. It already did some nice selection. You can see it missed some parts here that are too close to the way the sky looks. So you want to click on subtract and then carefully click here to add these back into the selection or basically subtract them from the selection like this. Be sure you stay inside of the mountain area and you do as best as possible. That looks pretty good. By the way, if you wonder how I move the canvas in the background, I'm using my middle mouse button for that. So that looks good. There's maybe a part. Okay, maybe not get too adventurous here. If there is a little bit of mountain missing, nobody's going to know. All right, this looks pretty good. And now don't, don't you click on refine because as soon as you click refine, Affinity Photo is going to start to refine and maybe do some crazy stuff that we don't want to happen. So don't do that. Instead, go up here to select and go to feather and then set it to a small value. In this case, I go through three pixels and click apply and that's it. Oh, there's a little bit of mountain missing here. We want to fix that real quick. Okay, so this should be good. And then we click on mask and here we have our mask. You see, there's a little, little bit of mountain missing, but nobody's gonna know that. All right, so the next thing you want to do is to select your sky and I have already placed it in here. If you don't know how to do that, you go to file and then select place and then you select your file and place it in there and that's how you add that. All right. So what we do now is we select the layer with the sky and then click Control G on the keyboard to make it a group. And then we will use the mask. So click on the mask and pull it onto the group, not on the layer with the sky onto the group. That's important because then we can still move the sky around, control D to deselect our selection so we don't have these squiggly lines. And you can see now I can move my sky around without touching the mask. So the mask stays put, I can resize it, I can uh, move the sky around, everything's good. Now you see this looks fairly unnatural. Reason for that is because we have some beautiful ambient light from the sunset, but this is not on the landscape. So of course, if the sky is red, the landscape should be a little bit red too, right? Okay, how are we going to do that? Now, usually if you've seen my videos before, you know I now duplicate this layer, but stay tuned because this time I'm going to do it differently. So I duplicate the layer with my sky and I push it up to the top. Now, usually now I would go to um, filters and then blur and average blur to get an average of that color. But this time I want to show you a different way to do that. That gives you a little bit more playful results. What we're going to do is instead we are going to go to arrange and then flip vertically. So it's upside down like this and then simply set it to soft light. Now, 
you have to be a little bit careful here as you can see now we have some blue grass down here doesn't look that good we don't want to have that also we see the full sky in the background so what we have to do here is to blur this so we go to effects and then we go to Gaussian blur and blur that like this so now we get rid of most of the details we can make it a little bit bigger and then move it down here until we don't see any more blue grass in here you can see now we have some blue grass now we don't so this is pretty nice and you can also see if this is anywhere visible in the sky it is not you can of course also apply a mask to that or you can erase from these parts and another thing and this is why I said it's more playful than the way I showed you before is if you move this around you will see that the darker clouds now have an impact on the landscape before now I want to point out these are not shadows but I just would see them as different interesting lighting effects that can happen in a situation where you have that many clouds in the sky so there might be some shadow there so that is kind of useful it is too extreme right now so you want to go to opacity and reduce that down to a value where it feels good to you in this case I would say maybe let's keep it at 60 percent or less 58 looks good and you can see we have now a very nice lighting to our landscape that even has a little bit of diverse light situation in there is not as clean and technical and digital as before is a little bit of life that we took right from nature as the skies down to the landscape to make it more interesting and that's basically everything you have to do to turn a normal picture into an amazing shot let's duplicate this move this up here so you can see this is the before this is the after it's just powerful okay thank you very much for watching see you in my next tutorial maybe join my facebook group where you meet a lot of amazing and nice people to help you with affinity photo and also have a newsletter where i send out the newest stuff that's happening and all the cool stuff that's well that i'm doing okay see you soon have a nice day bye